In the dead of night, Kip Kip skulks down a dark hall in the SS Shepherd. Illuminated by her antenna's light and armed with the knowledge that everyone else is asleep, she breaks into Russ's lab with a wave rake and a soft click. Though not known for being the most subtle or graceful member of the Rescue Corps, tonight, she must be. She must be discreet. She must get this right. Because Russ's latest device, one that can scramble memories across time and space, is the key to Kip Kip's vengeance. It was all too easy to get Russ to spill the details of its operation. He was always eager to talk about his inventions. Stepping inside an expansive control module, Kip Kip finds her target, an interdimensional deer cat, one who functions like a guiding force in the grand little game of Pikmin 4. Not that long ago, this being announced with mirth and laughter the extent of her betrayal. That she does not, in fact, aim to set up Kip Kip with her one true love, Yanni the Doctor, in a mighty literary work known only as fan fiction. That she, in fact, decided he must belong with another. And it was on this day, while the one known as Scale Tree stammered out a meager attempt at an apology, that Kip Kip swore her revenge. The machine powers on. Kip Kip smirks to herself. She giggles, then chuckles, then bursts into a full fit of maniacal laughter, the kind she and Yanni share, further proving that they are the ones who are meant to be. She hovers her hand over the trigger. Ready? Aim? Payback's a bitch, isn't it? What's up, Buttercups? My name is Scaletree. It's been many years since I've played Pikmin 4, but recently I've come upon a terrible realization. At this point in the playthrough, my memories were tampered with, and all footage corroborating their accuracy was irreversibly lost. It's been decades since I could recall what happened on that fateful in-game day, but I know that the lapse should be explained. I know it isn't right to leave you, my wonderful viewers, hanging. And so I've sent this transmission back in time so that it could be nestled in the appropriate spot on the playlist. This is a recap of the events that took place in episode 18. To maintain authenticity, I will speak as I did as a young adult all those years ago. For the sake of my past self, do recall that this is a mostly blind playthrough. Tips are appreciated, but remember to avoid posting spoilers now. Don't be like Kip Kip. Don't upset the fabric of space-time. Now sit back, grab a snack, and let's get back to Pikmin 4. Thank you. What's up, Buttercups? Let's pirouette around camp on Ochi while I tell you our to-do list. Today we're going to dominate a Dandori challenge in the morning, and in the afternoon we'll ruin the dead human's kitchen counter. But first... Dalmo. Buddy. Raw mats, please. Thanks, man. Now let's talk to Kaze and Twyla, the folks we rescued last time. Please save my boss. Mm-hmm. I'll put it on my to-do list. Now, Twyla, I... Are you... Digging in the dirt? Nice. Anyway, before I go, does anyone else have raw materials for me? Woohoo! Hey Russ, check out these materials. Could you give me something to base boost my whistle? Much better. Well, gotta go. Wait, you forgot to train Ochi's Mega Rush! Oh, she's already gone. Maybe tomorrow then. Hi, Moss! Sorry, I hate to be rude, but you being conscious is inconvenient, so... Onwards to the Dandori challenge! Ooh, is that the last card? Real talk, since it's been confirmed that opening Olimar's bunker is the very last thing I should take care of in Hero's Hideaway if I want to keep main game and post game separate, I'm opting to wait on that. But it's good to know I can save him any day now! I'm sure Colin's <laughs> dying for me to get on with it. Anyway, Dan Dory time! 
Looks like this one is called the Hefty Hall- Uh, ha ha, guys. Hilarious. At least this challenge features purple Pikmin. Surely that means I can carry out an even faster, more efficient plan. Hiya! Wow, I actually remembered the trick this time. I can't wait to show all my wonderful viewers that each episode I forgot to charge Ochi at the Candy Pop Buds was worth it for this sublime moment. Surely nothing could possibly ruin the footage for such an occasion. That would be absurd. Ah! Why is the minimum requirement so high? My purple Pikmin aren't fast enough! Where are my icy boys? Ah. Ugh. Another nail-biting finale. Why was this so much worse than the ice cross course? They're both three stars, and this time I barely bronzed. Oh well. At least the tension will be good content, right? Right? Ooh. Well, now that that's over, let's get this leafling back to the beagle and top that counter. Oh, there are tomatoes in the sink. It'll take too long to go back and get blue Pikmin to bring them out of the water. Maybe Ochi can pull them out, and then I can send some of the Pikmin I already have with me to drag them to base. Aw, good boy. Time to hop onto your back and find a good position to throw. Whoa, what? What's going on? Why is everyone drowning? What? So... When my clumsy hands guided Ochi, Kip Kip, and my Pikmin to the half-full sink, I tried to turn them around so I could face the tomatoes. However, I ended up turning under the ramp instead, due to the camera's position. Because of how Pikmin 4 handles collision when you're riding Ochi in a place where the player character's head would otherwise clip, Kip Kip spontaneously dismounted, which spread all of my rock and yellow Pikmin, into the water. My desperate whistling was not enough to save them. They drowned. This, my dear viewers, is pure B.S. Even as I record this line, I'm still salty just thinking about it. It's rewind time, and per the definition of insanity, I try again. Phew, <sighs> that's a relief. I'm so glad the tomato thing worked this time. Despite the annoying glitchiness, that was a fun puzzle, and I'm proud of the Ochi strat I came up with. Ooh, a button! Oh, come on! Ugh, hopefully checking out the stove will go better. Wait, what? Is that cave... on fire? Ochi, go take a solo look, why don't ya? Frozen Inferno? Ooh! You know, I once thought Sub-Zero Sauna would be a freeze flame cave, but this looks way more promising. Ugh, but geez, look at the sun. I can tell this is a through cave to a part of the counter I don't have access to yet, so what should I do with the rest of my day? <laughs> I know! In Plunder Palace, I learned that smashing Scuttlechuck crystals yields raw material, and I recall leaving some to the south. Let's get them! Yeah, it's been a long day's work, ladies and gents. What's our hall look like? <laughs> For goodness sake. Wait, it's getting late. Let's get back to the cave. <laughs> Only red Pikmin are allowed inside? <gasps> Ooh, that's such a clever way to redo the only one type mechanic from the submerged and engulfed castle. I'm super impressed. Well, without further ado, let's dive on in. We'll check out the cave next time, as that'll keep things nice and fresh for my next recording session. Could you imagine if I woke up in here, lost and confused because I had amnesia? Wondering things like, how the hell did I get here? How will I survive? And do red Pikmin actually taste like Pikmin -pik carrots? Such a terrifying thing to consider. Good thing I can trust in the integrity of my recordings, and especially my storage device. With that, I believe we've reached the end of this episode. I sincerely apologize for the loss of my usual footage and live commentary. After doing some digging, I'm positive that I figured out what happened, and I'd like to assure you all that I plan to take further precautions in the future recording sessions in an attempt to avoid other incidents. In the meantime, I hope you found this silly substitute a decent recap so that you aren't lost when we move on to episode 19 and beyond. I admit, Part of why it took so long to release episode 15 
is because I had to take a little time to recover from how wounded and dismayed I felt at the loss of my footage. It took the emotional support of family and friends alike for me to get back on my feet and attempt to make lemonade out of this sour, bitter lemon. So I'd like to take a moment to sincerely thank them. I know you'll watch this, you know who you are, and I'm forever grateful to have wonderful people like you in my life. Additionally, I knew I didn't want to let any of my lovely buttercups down. Your support on my videos really means a lot to me, and I don't think I'd be half as excited to make them if it weren't for your delightful comments. So thank you all so much. I really appreciate your sticking around and joining me on my adventures, even when I have to put them together with glue and spit. All that said, if you like this content and want to see more, I'm sure you know what to do. In the meantime, I've been your hostess, Scaletree, and I hope to see you around. Bye, guys! Bye.